Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of BSD Synergy. I'm your host, Mason Egger, and this week we'll be doing our OpenBSD router. So I know it's been long putting that we do an OpenBSD router, but we finally know everything we need to know uh, to get this going. So today we're going to go through a PF configuration that is I find suitable for an OpenBSD router. Um, then I'll also walk you through enabling DHCPD and Unbound, which are by default installed on the OpenBSD system. And with those things and a SysCTL swizzle, we'll be good to go and we'll have ourselves a router. So with all further ado, let's just go ahead and jump on into the demo. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have all the pieces we need enabled for our router. So that way, if we do have to reboot or something, uh, that they come back up. Now, let it be known that this is, again, a virtual machine router, so it's going to have one external interface and one internal interface, and everybody internally will be binding to that interface across the network. If you had a physical device that had multiple NICs, you would have to set it up slightly different, and I maybe one day if I can get my hands on something that can actually take having OpenBSD flashed on it, I'll do a physical demonstration of an OpenBSD router. If anybody who's viewing has a suggestion of a physical, you know, inexpensive, um, you know, router that I can flash OpenBSD on to set up, I would love for you to leave that in the comments below and I'll look into getting it and doing that as a video. So we're going to just make sure that everything in OpenBSD is enabled properly. So uh, for those of you that come from Linux land or even FreeBSD land where you have service, you know, enable, or if you're like, I work with Red Hat a lot at work, system CTL, for like system D based stuff, uh, you'll use to that. But in OpenBSD, it's RCCTL, and we're going to enable PF, we're going to enable DHCPD, and we're going to enable Unbound. Unbound is uh, is a DNS resolver. It's I guess it's kind of a play on words, bind and then unbound. I don't know. Um, so we go ahead. We're going to go ahead and have that. And then the other thing you're going to want to do, or the, I guess we'll go with this, this order, uh, in your in your uh, Etsy sysctl.conf, make sure you add net inet ip forwarding equals one. So this will allow for packets to come in and be forwarded uh, across across your NICs. So this enable basically turns the box into a router. Normally this uh, sysctl variable is set to zero. Um, but we need to set it to one. But if we want to go ahead and set this in our current ru running system, sysctl, uh, we're going to go ahead and just set it now. inet.ip.forward.ing equals one. And I already had it set on my machine because this my system's already running. But it would just say either zero to one, which would be turning it on, and that will be good. And then on reboot, now that you have it in your sysctl.conf, it will persist. So the first thing we're going to talk about will be uh, let's do our unbound.conf. So that is in var unbound etc unbound.conf. And this is a really straightforward one to set up. Basically, you have your server, you have the interface you want it to listen on. By default, this file is much larger. I have trimmed it down, taken out the comments, taking out the things I didn't want. Um, so you would set your interface, uh, 192.168.5.1 is the interface that I will be using. So you set that, and then you allow control, access control, you set, you know, the interface, dot zero, and then basically, you know, set your, your site or subnet mask to allow, so that way people can actually allow queries on it. And, you know, do not query the local host if you don't want it to be querying local host. Hide identity, hide version, those are good. You know, keeps you secure if, the, you know, if somebody is banging up against your external server. Not like anybody could because we're not going to allow them. But hiding identity and hiding version is good in case, um, you know, that you are running an insecure version of Unbound that, you know, you hadn't had the time to patch it yet, but you don't want people on the outside knowing. So it, it's a good thing. Uh, forward zone, you know, your dot, and then I'm just forwarding it to Google's DNS. Uh, for, for simplicity, you can forward it to whatever you want. You can have more forward ADDRs. You can have um, IPv6 in here, whatever you want. But for now, on our basic system, since we're only going to be doing IPv4, uh, this is what we'll deal with. So that's all you need for the unbound. Ah, I'm so used to Vim. I keep doing QA. And then what you would do is just rcctl start unbound. And that returned nothing because my unbound server was already running. So basically, what you would see is something like that if you had actually turned it on. So if I, I stop my unbound server, I'm starting it again. Okay, and now it's running. I'm not going to show that again for the rest of the services, but that's just so you can start it. It'll persist past reboot. 
So the next thing we're going to handle will be our dhcpd.conf. And what we have here is we have option, we have our domain name servers, um, which is basically this is just where this is what this is where our DNS server is, and this is we're gonna have it on, you know, since it's a router, it's gonna be on that interface. Uh, the subnet and the net mask option routers right there again uh, range will be basically these are the addresses that I want to allow and this will work for the majority of your you know basically everything on the network is DHCP now if you want to do uh, reservations or you, you know you leave it at four because you want things below four to be able to have a static IP or you know you I can always raise it up or what I can do is if I want to do DHCP reservations which you know, it's pretty cool. I can do host and then we'll just call it my laptop. And what we would do is we would do fixed address and then I'm going to set it to 192.168.5.2 semicolon and then hardware ethernet and then you would need your MAC address here. And then you would have that. And then that's how you would do reserved addresses with inside your DHCP config. So now if we just, you know, rcctl start DHCPD, mine's already running and we're good. Now the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the pf.conf. So this is a default, this is, this is my idea of a good default system for an OpenBSD router. So let's just go ahead, I'm gonna do it one line at a time and I commented it so that way you could pause the video and read it and read what's going on. So I typically set my block policy to drop because uh, sending reset packets, I, I, I don't know, it's, it's really your decision. I had a friend that told me if you don't send the reset packets, they just think the host is down. If you actively block them, then they know that the host is there. And he told me always use drop and I was like, eh, whatever. But drop is pretty good, you know, it, you know, it just, Ignore the packet, so it's not bad. Uh, set skip on loopback. I do not want to, uh, I don't need to filter anything within loopback, but if you wanted to, you actually could. So I personally don't want to, so I'm setting that to skip. Uh, last week we talked about macros, so I'm macroing EM0 and EM1 to external interface and internal interface. I'm blocking all uh, INET6. I am blocking all, and then my default policy is block all. So basically, if nothing else, if no other rules match from block all down, that means that 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 uh, tra that transaction will be blocked. So if if none of my other rules match, it's that's you know remember uh, PF is last match. So we trust packets on our internal network. So my laptop, which is talking to the router, I trust that packets from my internal network are indeed, you know, they're not malicious packets. So we can pass them in. So basically this pass in rule passes in packets from my network into my router. And then this second rule down here and then we, is pa to pass them out. So basically we tag them aloud when we pass them to the router. And then once we get to the router, we pass out packets that were tagged aloud. That way we know this was from the internal and then this is allowed out. It's kind of a little bit redundant. You could just pass out. Um, but this was how I was taught by a friend who's very deep in, into the PF uh, world. Like he, he basically taught me a lot about PF. And it's it, for me, it's good practice, you know, if something did manage to get passed in that didn't come from the internal interface that came from the router, it could be passed out. So we really kind of don't want that. So we tag allowed at all steps to make sure that nothing malicious can get out. That's not saying that malicious things won't get out. I mean, you can really never stop that. If you have something on the internal interface network that is malicious, of course it will get out because it was tagged. But if it's not on that network it's, and it tries to go out through the router, it's not gonna make it. It also kind of, what it also does is it also stops things, say the router itself got compromised and is trying to do stuff. Those packets aren't tagged as allowed. They can't, they're not allowed out because they didn't come in from the internal interface and they didn't get tagged. So this kind of also stops the router. If the router did get compromised, it couldn't pass things out. Now, of course, if the router does get compromised, I'm, you, you know, it's compromised. It's probably going to be screwed and it's probably going to be doing more things than that. You know, if they have root access on it, they can change my firewall rules. They can do anything. But it, if it, for some reason, you know, a weird little thing got in there and it was trying to talk out, it's not going to let it happen.
Now, that being said, this next rule just basically completely undoes that uh, because we're passing out from the external interface and the internal interface. But the interesting thing here is the external interface is in parentheses. These parentheses uh, mean that these that, that is being done, that is being evaluated. The external interface macro is being out, evaluated. The packets are being inspected. So that's kind of like a dynamic thing. I don't really know the performance implications of that. Um, again, this was, uh, I took this config from an old config that I had done years ago from a friend who had helped me set some things up. Um, that might have performance implications because you're constantly doing, because you're constantly reevaluating the external interface uh, for every packet. That might have problems. But I ran, I ran a network with this, with this rule set on it for years and on a 10-1 line never had problems with it so if you know or if you have thoughts about that please leave me a comment i do i do read the comments i don't i'm going to get around to answering them i don't always have the time but i'm definitely planning on doing that soon so leave me a comment below i always appreciate it and then your basic pass in rule we're going to pass in on the external interface protocol tcp from any and we're going to redirect it to this random ip address this ip address isn't even on my network i don't think anybody's actually listening on it but all ssh traffic will go straight to port 22 which is pretty good and that is pretty much it you know that's the firewall so you know uh the firewalls are different slightly uh i'm going to use pfctl-f at cpf.conf and that basically is a flush and it reloads the rules. So you could do, you know, you can reboot if you, it will persist by a reboot. This is just basically me reloading the rules because um, PF is different. And now we have a, we have a rule. We have a, we have a firewall. So if I go to, so if I go to my, so if I go to my environment over here, I have TrueOS. I installed the uh, latest TrueOS for this demonstration and basically go to my Q terminal. Activate window. It's being slow. My computer doesn't like running my recording software and two VMs at the same time. So if I hit an IF config, IF config, as you can see, I'm set to 192.168.5.4. My DHCP server did in fact give me the give me an IP address from there. So basically the way I set this up inside of uh, VirtualBox for those for those playing at home. Um, there's the VM. One interface in VirtualBox has external access to the VirtualBox bridge, and then another interface inside basically goes to a VirtualBox network that is isolated. Nobody else is allowed on the network, and it's just the router and my TrueOS desktop. So I have that, and now if I try to ping out, if I try to ping my DNS server, I am going to get some responses. And if I ping, ooh, it is not liking it. <laughs> I can hear my machine, like, it sounds like it's about to take off. Really need to get, like, a desktop or something and stop doing this on a MacBook Pro. And we can ping Google. We can ping out. I can, and that's pretty much it. You know, that was a router. I, uh, when the machine came up, it just sent out the DHCP request, DH client. It got their app. It got the response back. And there you go. That's, that's a BSD router. So that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, go ahead and leave me a like. If you want to comment and, you know, explain to me something that I may have gotten wrong or, you know, just say how much you like the channel, go ahead and leave me a comment. I'm open to all forms of communication with you guys. If you want to support the channel, go ahead and do that. Make sure that if you haven't done the survey that's in the link below that you do the survey. I definitely have seen some ideas in there that I'm like, oh, I never thought about doing that. Or, oh, people actually want to see a video on that. I'm going to do that now. So I'm definitely taking those survey results uh, seriously. Um, please leave me a message or something. Let me know what you want to see more of and I will gladly provide. Thanks for watching everyone and I hope you have a good week.